Welcome back! In this video, we are going to be taking a look at the forest line of colours from the Schmincke's Super Granulating Colours. First of all, let's have a look at what colours are in the forest range. First up, we have the Forest Olive, which is made of PG18, PBR7 and PY43. Forest Green, PG19, and PBR33. Then we have the Forest Blue, PB36 and PBK11. Forest Brown, which is made out of PG26, PBR7 and PY43. And finally, we have Forest Grey, which is made of P. PBR7, PG50 and PBK11. So that's all the colours ready to go and dry. Let's take a closer look at each of these colours. First up we have the Forest Olive and it's a beautiful, I would definitely call this olive. I, for, for once I actually agree with the naming of the colour. If you're looking for a beautiful granulating olive and I know some people go out of their way on a long long journey to try to find a perfect olive then definitely give this a go it's beautiful it doesn't separate colors as much as other colors that we've looked but the texture on here is just so soft and nice and if you do a lot of autumnal landscape this will be a great color as well if you also like a soft palette of muted colors this is a great mixing color for that it is a low tinting trends color say don't have it if you have similar palettes to mine where all the colors are very strong tinting strengths but even then like this is quite a strong palette and you can create a very very soft palette it's just it's just a little bit more awkward to get to those color because of the difference in tinting strengths but you can still mix with it and it creates a beautiful palette if you're looking for this soft muted palette great mixing color i'm guessing here because as we've already said these are just for reference rough guesses as to what this color is made from i just picked a color for each pigment code we don't have any, any information about life fastness and transparency that we can rely on because the only information at the moment on at the time of recording this is from Jackson's and I never rely on Jackson's information. They're great shop but their information is all over the place. They, they classify all the forest colors as transparent and even though I actually agree with that on here, it's pretty transparent, you will see in say the next color that not all forest colors are transparent. It's actually quite hard to lift. This is relatively more staining than the other colors that we've looked at in the series so far, which actually makes it for a better glazer. It's still, you can just about see the paleness. And if you want to have more time and in more detail to look at these test sheets, I put all my test sheets, high res scans over on my Patreon, which is patreon.com forward slash autocano. But very ever so slightly lighter but a lot 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 better than the colors we've looked at so far in this series next up we have the forest green it is mixed with pg19 which i'm guessing is cobalt green pure with pbr33 which i'm guessing is the mahogany brown and yeah, it is just like a slightly darker cobalt green pure. I think if you have cobalt green pure, you probably wouldn't bother having this as a separate thing because the two are so similar. And the only difference is obviously the PBR33 starts coming through here, but not for that long. You see a little bit here, the brown, and you see a little bit here, and that's about it. So you kind of have to squint to really notice the difference between this and just cobalt green pure on its own. In terms of mixing colors, it actually makes a very lovely palette. It is very high tinting strength. It's also very opaque paint. As I said, I told you, these are not all transparent. This is very opaque. I would definitely classify this as an opaque color. 
it's also quite staining color there's still a lot of residue left here i would call this semi staining however it's that doesn't st make it a good glazer either i feel meh about this color in terms of how unique it is and also the color on its own i personally wouldn't be going for this but if you are looking for a slightly warmer cobalt green pure then this is a good option for you but just don't forget that there are some shine on the mask stone so try avoid using it in the mask stone because you're going to have all sorts of shiny problems then we have the forest blue i think it's a beautiful color this is beautiful color i've lined up a few colors that i thought might look close to the forest blue but now that i've put them side by side they are quite different you probably don't need all four colors this is definitely the more greener color and i can definitely see it's weird because I see this color as more glacier color than forest color. I imagine painting the dark coloration on the glacier more with this color than this color. This is more of like the main body of a glacier and then this is like the dark parts of it. I'm guessing that my guesses of which colors they've used is off because I randomly chose Cobalt Cerulean and Mars Black. but then where's the yellow coming from to add to that so probably not these colors but it would be of some combination of pbk11 and pb36 but it is beautiful on its own it's just stunning on its own and i think it goes really well with let me find it the galaxy pink yeah it goes beautifully these two colors so if you like the galaxy pink and you're looking for another color, you might consider forest blue. It is a heavily granulating color, but the most of the granulation is up here in the mass tone and then light granulation down here. It's not a super heavy granulating color like some of the other colors, but you see really lively green coming through here, which is just gorgeous gorgeous in terms of mixing colors it neutralizes really well with the vermilion and it stays neutralized which is different from what we saw with the i think it was the glacier galaxy black yeah where we see a clear separation between the colors which is quite interesting in how different it behaves when mixed with warm colors in terms of opacity, I would say this is semi-transparent. It is super easy to react to, which is really nice. And then it is, I would say semi-staining, it's quite staining, which actually makes it for a much better glazer than a lot of the other colors. It's pretty even on the second layer. And you see the line of the outline of the first layer very clearly. then we have the forest brown which is kind of similar to the forest olive just a little bit greener and that's not surprising because they both have pbr7 and py43 as their secondary and tertiary colors it's just whether it's used the pg18 probably a viridian or PG26, which is probably a cobalt green dark. You definitely see this having more blueness to its green, which is true. And it's definitely a stronger color, more intense color. But I would be like, don't bother buying both, pick one or the other that you prefer. You get the green granulation happening all the way through, which is beautiful. And you definitely get the jewel tone that you don't really get in the forest olive. So if you are looking for colors to separate more and be more obvious, this is the better choice. And go for the forest olive if you don't want the colors to be so separating. In terms of color mix, it creates okay palette. I, I wouldn't jump at this palette like how I liked the Forest Olive palette. So no ideal as a mixing color. It is, I would call this semi opaque, semi transparent. There's definitely some deposits on the line. It's very difficult to tell between semi opaque and semi transparent 
when you're looking at it with your eyes. It is quite heavily staining, which makes it for a much easier glaze. You definitely see a slight outline where it's lifted, but not that badly. And then finally, we have the forest grey. This is like the chalkier cousin of the all the blacks we've been seeing in this line of swimming gauge super granulating colours. And this is the warmer option of the black colours. And that's not surprising because PBR7 is the main colour. And you do see some blue granulation coming through of the PG50 in here. But you kind of really have to squint to notice that it's a blue granulation. It could easily be seen as black granulation as well. In terms of mixing with colours, it's okay. It's okay. It creates decent palette. I wouldn't jump at it, but it also mixes well with all the colours. It does suffer from some shininess at the top here. So just watch out for that if you're going to use it in its mass tone. It is very super easy to re-wet and in terms of transparency, I would say this is semi-transparent. It's definitely less opaque than the previous one, the forest brown. So if I call this semi-transparent, then I would probably call forest brown semi-opaque, but I, yeah, it's very difficult to tell between those two. It's relatively easy to lift, but still some deposit, which makes it for a harder color to glaze. And you can really see the blue granulation happening a lot better here, I think, than here. That's it for the forest colors. And this one, I can totally understand the idea behind this a little bit better. It is all green foresty colors, which is nice because the ideas behind the colors have been not so obvious with this range and we've not had much marketing information about them. You definitely don't need all five of them, especially with between the forest brown and forest olive. They're very similar. Just pick which one you want. If I had to sum it up, really old tree bark, the dark stuff, nice olive, meh, beautiful color. Uh, I don't know what to call the forest brown more granulating olive kind of, kind of color yeah if i had to rank it would definitely be forest blue first without a shadow of doubt forest olive i think forest gray and forest brown shares the same third spot and then forest green is the last out of these though i would probably only buy forest blue if i was buying these paints for myself so what did you think of the forest colours? Did you find a new favourite colour? If so, do let me know. What did you find a colour that you really didn't like? Also let me know. If you are wanting to try the forest colours but you don't want to buy all five tubes in like 15ml, then I do have a dot card for you this month that is the forest colors of the Schmigga granulation range. Then I do have a dot card for you that is the all five colors of the forest green. Because it's only five colors, whereas I normally have eight colors, I've put extra amount if you've noticed. So you get the same amount of paint as you would do with any other dot cards. I would say that it's definitely enough paint to do a test sheet like this. And if you want to do your own test sheet like this, then you can download that from over on my Patreon. To have the test sheet and to sign up to receive the dot card, you can head on over to patreon.com forward slash autocano. Don't forget that I have the dot cards for all the other super granulating colors if you've missed out on them so far. If you sign up to a tier where you receive a dot card, then you can also order the old ones as well. And it's very economical. So do check that out as well. In the next video, we're going to do a conclusion. I'm going to talk about how I think about this whole range. Also, I'm going to try to help you dis navigate how to decide what colors to go for because it's incredibly confusing with so many colors and not much guidance from Schmincke. I'm going to do all that for you in the next video so do check back in next week. I've left links down below to where you can get all these paints. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next video. Bye!